All right, everybody. Um, thank you for being patient while we just let everyone get settled into the session. Uh, so we're going to get things going here with our Faculty of Science information session. Uh, so just before we get things underway, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping rules. Uh, so the biggest one is to direct all of your questions to the Q&A section rather than the chat box. Um, there'll be a Q&A um, period at the end of the event and we will be looking for the questions in the Q&A section. Uh, also, uh, if you post your name and where you're from in the chat, we will be doing a draw for a prize at the end of the event. So you can put that information in the chat box. And just so everybody knows, the event is being recorded and will be uploaded to sanifex.ca slash info. Uh, but uh, if you are an attendee, none of your information uh, will be recorded. Uh, so, uh, my name is John McNeil and I work as a student success leader in the recruitment office here at St. FX. Uh, I actually was a student in the Faculty of Science. I graduated in May of 2019 with a Bachelor of Science in Human Kinetics. So I have firsthand experience myself as to how you know, incredible this department is. So I work specifically with students from the regions of Cape Breton, Southwestern Ontario and the United States. Uh, but I'm happy to answer questions for, you know, any students and we do have our team um, working kind of across both Canada and the United States. And I'll give you some information at the end of this event, uh, how you can uh, get in touch with us if you're looking for uh, some more information. So basically my role is to work with students to provide them any information they, they're looking for about St. FX to help them make an informed decision uh, about their post-secondary education. So just to give you a little idea of what this event is going to look like, in a, a few moments here, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Ann Fox to give a general overview of the Faculty of Science, and then we will move on to um, the, some welcomes from our chairs and directors from the various uh, departments within the Faculty of Science. We will also have a few student ambassadors sharing their experience within the Faculty of Science, and then we'll move on to the Q&A. Uh, so with that, uh, I'm going to pass it on to Dr. Ann Fox. Um, she is the chair of the Human Nutrition Department at St. FX to give a, a general overview of the Faculty of Science. Great, thanks so much and welcome everybody. I've been watching the various names pop up and I see that we've got people coming in for the session from coast to coast to coast and south of the border and east and west of the border and that's just wonderful. Um, before I welcome you all, I would like to just acknowledge that here in Nova Scotia and at St. FX University, our university is located on the traditional and ancestral land of the Mi'kmaq people. We feel extremely privileged to have our university on that territory. And we offer this acknowledgement out of great respect for the Mi'kmaq people. So welcome everyone. Um, normally we would have our Dean, Dan Beliveau. He's our Dean of Science. Um, sharing and giving this overview with you, but he's not able to be here 
this evening. So it's my pleasure to do that. And I'm um, uh, accompanied by many colleagues who teach and uh, coordinate programs within our Faculty of Science. And we really hope we can share some of our enthusiasm for what we do with you and answer all the questions that you have. So we'll, we'll proceed now. If, yeah, so um, in our Faculty of Science, you can see that we have a number of different programs. This sort of color cube uh, outlines it. We have um, social sciences. We have um, two interdisciplinary science programs, aquatic science and the Bachelor of Arts in Science and Health program. We have natural sciences in the darker blue. We, and we have applied sciences. And um, I'm not specifically going to go into each one of those. We have the department chairs from them here tonight to do that. So let's move on then. So if you're wondering what a science degree at St. FX looks like, um, there are a number of different options. Um, from a major degree where you focus on a particular aspect of science, an advanced major where you maybe want to start getting into um, a little more critical research, and then an honors degree where you actually conduct your own research in your final year of study under the supervision of one of our faculty. And one of the things that we feel is important is that um, arts courses should actually be part of a science degree. And the art subjects teach and enable you to not only be really well-rounded, but to also think in a multiple, uh, multiple different ways that actually helps us in our science work. So you'll notice that as you progress through our science degree, you actually have the opportunity, as well as a requirement, um, to take arts courses and uh, you can actually do a minor in an arts subject if you wish. And then you also have room for electives and those electives could be in a science discipline or they could be in an arts or humanities discipline because we really wanna give everybody an opportunity to explore, to try new things. This is the time in your life to do that. Um, you know, students often say to me that the, when they get, arrive in first year, there's courses that they'd never even heard of in subjects that they weren't even aware of. And that's great. And we want you to try those things out. So um, your, your science degree is a science degree, but it's a rich one with courses from other areas as well. So I'm not going to get into all the nitty gritty of what's required for every program, but just to encourage you to um, have a close look at the website. Many of you might have applied and been offered acceptance already, or maybe you're, you know, you're thinking about it. Just have a quick look at the calendar and make sure that um, the courses you need for admission um, you actually have. So you'll see that all the programs require um, high school English. Um, they all require some, some kind of math prep preparation. And um, then the uh, chemistry, physics, and biology requirements vary a little bit among the various programs. So just make sure that you've had a look at what the requirements are for the various different faculty of science programs. And we can answer questions a little bit later about that if you have specific inquiries. So we'll go to the next slide then. One of the things um, I think it's important to note is that even though we're a faculty of science, we do have a few programs that actually give you the option to take a Bachelor of Arts and Science. And um, the first one is in the area of health, where you have a foundation year in arts and science and some general health courses. And then you can focus your degree program either on a biomedical approach to health, where you take a lot of life science courses, or on a social determinants of health and health equity 
uh, focus. So you might be a little more interested in social justice issues, in ensuring that um, various populations can access health, um, and what are the factors that determine uh, those uh, social justice elements. So the social determinant stream is an alternative to the biomedical approach to health and a very important one. And both of them uh, involve health humanities as well. And so if you look at um, some of the, the little boxes on the right hand of this slide, it gives you a sense of some of the issues and some of the courses um, that students take in the Bachelor of Arts and Science program in health. So we'll move on there. The other um, Bachelor of Arts and Science program is in climate and environment. And what could be a more timely uh, and uh, important topic these days? I think it's on everybody's minds. It's in the news um, constantly. And um, in this program, you can also lean more towards an arts or a science. Um, and looking at cl the climate concentration or the environment concentration and uh, drawing in from both the humanities as well as um, the core science courses. And on the left, we see some of the topics that, um, that this program focuses on. So one of the, the questions I think people are probably asking themselves is, is why science at St. FX? Why science and, and why St. FX? And um, I think, you know, my answer to that is that we're pretty proud at St. FX. We're a small university. We get to know our students and um, we focus on, on undergraduate education. And so that actually allows our faculty to spend time with undergrads from very early on in the program to involve you in research and in training and in being in labs or being in communities, um, doing science related research. We also um, try and give a very holistic approach to science education. So it's not just about academic excellence, but you can see in the little wheel um, on the right of the slide here that we're really interested in making sure all students at St. FX have a great experience and have, um, have all kinds of opportunities um, that you're involved in social responsibility and innovation. We have a wonderful service learning program that is incorporated into many of our courses that gets students out working in community, providing community service. We are working constantly on our equity and inclusion initiatives and have support for students. Um, and of course, uh, stewardship and sustainability to to the land and to our province and our country. Um, so it's a, we really try to have a comprehensive um, approach and, and foster student curiosity uh, around science and inquiry in a holistic way. Um, some of the, the key features, um, you know, I guess every university says it's, its professors are dedicated, but ours really are. Um, and I think that goes back to the fact that we love what we do and we're a small campus um, in a small town. The town is very much a part of us and we're very much a part of the town. We get to know our students, our students get to know us. Um, that allows for a lot of hands-on learning experience, whether it's service learning that's built into courses where we connect with community agencies as part of our coursework or research opportunities or leadership programs. Um, we're really trying to build your critical thinking and problem solving skills in hands-on and experiential ways. So um, at this point, I'm going to turn it over to, um, to John, who I believe is going to introduce the various different department 
chairs to give a brief overview about each of the different science programs um, here at X. Perfect. Thank you, Dr. Fox. That was a great introduction to the Faculty of Science. Uh, so we'll work through our uh, various departments in alphabetical order. Uh, so that means we will be starting uh, with our biology department. So I would like to call upon Dr. Moira Galway, the chair of biology, uh, to give an introduction to what biology is at St. FX. Dr. Galway? Yeah, thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. It's uh... Great to be here. And um, I'm the uh, first slide I have here, I'm not going to dwell on this. Uh, there's already been a reference made to the uh, program diversity and flexibility that we have here. Uh, basically, student advisors will help you design whatever program you want, uh, combining almost any disciplines. So let's take a look at the next slide. I think we can move on. Thank you. Um, yeah, but one thing I did want to mention was that um, we do have uh, one special thing, and that is uh, the advanced majors and honors students can choose a 15 credit concentration in one of the areas shown below. So you can see that basically the concentrations cover the range of uh, biology from the submicroscopic all the way up to the macroscopic um, population scale that we see with ecology. Thank you. Next slide. And uh, I think that's expressed in these uh, two figures here. Uh, I chose these deliberately uh, to show what's going on in campus in biology in 2020-2021, uh, uh, operating under pandemic circumstances, of course, uh, with masking and social distancing, maybe not so much outdoors where the air is blowing freely, but certainly indoors. Thank you. Uh, next slide. Um, so the uh, we do have, um, I think, one big advantage that we have small upper year courses. And this is true of many of the science departments. Um, so our Comparators at Acadia, for example, and Mount Allison actually have a much larger graduating class than we do. So we are average class size about 15 or so, and that allows uh, upper year students to work closely with faculty and staff um, to get that technical and critical thinking skills that will be valuable in their future careers. Um, next slide, I think. Yeah, so um, again, this is uh, just pre-pandemic, but it does convey the uh, relatively small size. This is a third year class, which is quite typical. We only have one, one really large third year class and that's about 40 people. So next slide, thank you. Um, so this here I've tried to summarize uh, some of the opportunities for uh, students to develop and grow that aren't just solely academic and again, many of these do apply to the other programs, but um, in biology in particular, we have uh, really good degree planning and career exploration. Uh, because we have this uh, program, or sorry, uh, course, the junior seminar course, which is dedicated to that subject. Then we also have uh, over 50 students in normal circumstances, not so many this year, being employed um, to assist with the teaching of other undergraduates. And um, as it happens, we also have a lot of uh, hands-on research assistantships in the summer, even during pandemic uh, times, we have this going on. And I'll uh, talk a little bit about that more in a second. Um, also, there's the co-op program and that's quite undersubscribed by our students. Um, there's definitely lots of room for growth there. Opportunities for students to study and do paid work at the same time in training and areas relevant to their future careers. And finally, uh, this is true for everybody. There's a really robust international exchange program uh, where you can study biology and other disciplines during one term abroad in Europe or Australia. So I think 
next slide. Yeah. Um, so here I've got some pre and post pandemic student um, laboratory research. Uh, these in both cases, uh, these are research projects going on in the summer. Uh, the one on the right was, I think, in August of this uh, year, uh, once we were allowed back on campus. So last slide for me, and I hope I'm on time here. Uh, there are, of course, is, um, for biology students, there's actually a lot of career options, many of which may not be particularly obvious. Medicine and health careers are obvious, uh, veterinary medicine. But uh, some of our graduates go on to work in environmental consulting and resource management, science communications and administration, uh, business, biotechnology, education. And I myself have had several students go on to law school and uh, are now practicing lawyers. So I think that's it in a nutshell. Um, and I think that should be the last, my last slide. So thank you. And I'll just turn off my video. Perfect. Thank you very much for that introduction to biology at Santa Fe. Uh, so next up is uh, Dr. Manuel Aquino, the chair of our chemistry department. Yes, good evening all and uh, I'm so glad you all showed up. That's great. I'm uh, the chair of the chemistry department here at Santa Fe and I'm going to cut it old school here by just uh, talking at you for a, a few minutes. Uh, chemistry, of course, uh, is often referred to as the central science, and uh, you can get a great, uh, very flexible degree with chemistry, uh, where you can perhaps, you know, uh, dwell towards the more physical aspects of things or the more biological aspects of things. Uh, we have, of course, all the major programs. Uh, you can find that in your calendars at, at leisure or on the website. Uh, majors, advanced majors, honors. Uh, we have a minor, of course. Uh, we have a fairly undersubscribed uh, joint advanced major program and joint honors programs with the uh, other sciences, but that's certainly a, a, a very a good option. And there's also a joint uh, degree with business, uh, which is also a little undersubscribed, but uh, also offers a, a very interesting and flexible program. We have 10 faculty members, nine of who are tenured track uh, or tenured, and uh, three of them are university teaching award winners. We have a long history of uh, teaching uh, winners. And we offer, of course, all the core courses for chemistry and the service courses for other programs, most of the other programs, um, very uh, numerous uh, special interest courses, such as uh, Things like photochemistry, cutting edge research interests, uh, medical medicinal chemistry, polymer chemistry, uh, areas you, you may not have thought of, but are very, very relevant uh, these days. We have uh, with almost every course, we have labs associated with them. Uh, and those labs are occupied by uh, demonstrators and uh, supervisors, but also uh, the vast majority have the professor actually in, in the laboratory. So that's a, a feature that a lot of the students like. We have uh, substantial research opportunities in the department, um, usually after second year, but even sometimes after first year uh, with scholarships and even without scholarships, you can take uh, a lot of positions in cutting edge research. We have a number of faculty active in the, such things as nanotechnology, uh, photochemistry, uh, carbon dioxide remediation, green chemistry. We have somebody working on uh, preservation of lobsters and optimization of that, uh, as well as, the, as uh, the traditional research areas of organic and inorganic and physical. Uh, so why study chemistry? Well, uh, career-wise, uh, basically the world is your oyster. Um, we have put a number of students into graduate school. Of course, we prepare students for graduate schools, masters and PhDs, industrial positions, uh, governmental labs. Um, students go on into education. We've had students go into forensic sciences, pharmacy, dentistry, medical school, optometry, uh, biotech, drug, you name it. There are, there are many, many, many uh, careers. Uh, involvement wise to get students involved at an early point, um, not only do we have positions in the research labs for, for students, but also we have a program over the summer called XChem Outreach, which involves uh, running uh, chemistry camps on campus. 
and uh, also going visiting the schools uh, to teach chemistry um, in a modular sort of sense. And we, uh, we often hire 10 to 12 students over the summer, some straight out of first year to, to do those sorts of things. There's also a very active chemical uh, student society run by uh, two seniors who are uh, invoked as presidents of the society, but they have social events. Uh, they run tutorials, deal with chemical merchandise, fundraisers, uh, assist with organizing conferences and all sorts of sorts of things. So uh, yeah, so that's uh, basically uh, the department in a nutshell, uh, very active, uh, very friendly and a good relationship between the, uh, the professors and, and the students, of course. And if you have any further questions, I'd be glad to, to answer them at the Q&A uh, at the end. Thank you. Perfect, thank you very much. So now we are going to move on to computer science. So I'd like to welcome the computer science chair, Dr. Iker Gondra. Uh, hello everyone. I'm very happy to be here this evening with, with everyone. Um, uh, I'm going to let you know what the degrees that we offer in the department. So we have all the standard uh, choices for the undergraduate degree. Um, you, we have a Bachelor of Science with major, advanced major, and honors. Uh, we have different uh, concentrations. So these are different ways that you can uh, specialize your computer science degree. So we have the computing concentration, which is the traditional uh, computer science uh, degree. And we also have uh, a, recent, a relatively new concentration, which is the analytics concentration. And this is something that you will be doing if you are interested in big data, uh, data analysis, uh, data mining. Uh, <clears throat> we also have the pre-education concentration, which is the one that you will choose if you are interested in teaching computer science. Uh, we also have the possibility of doing a computer science degree uh, jointly with another uh, discipline. So we have joint degrees with physics, with uh, and with other, uh, with other disciplines. Uh, we also have the minor, and you also can do a major or an advanced major concurrently with a diploma in engineering. So this is basically uh, due to the very uh, strong uh, relationship between computer science and, and engineering. Uh, in our department, we also have a very active uh, uh, research um, base a master of computer science. We also have a course-based master of applied computer science, as well as a post-baccalaureate diploma in artificial intelligence. So these are, I guess these ones are not so relevant to you. These are the degrees that we offer, the graduate degrees that we offer. Um, in terms of um, the, the our undergraduate degree, uh, it aligns uh, very well with the current ACM and IEEE curriculum guidelines. Uh, if you are not familiar with these organizations, uh, these are the major professional organizations that provide uh, guidelines for computing programs, and these are international organizations. Uh, our degree prepares the students uh, very well by giving you both the underlying uh, theoretical knowledge, uh, basically the foundations of computing, uh, which can be very theoretical, uh, that is essential uh, to adapt to this uh, very rapidly evolving uh, field. Um, so basically, you get this uh, solid uh, education in the in the theoretical foundations of computer science by taking uh, core courses. And we also we make sure that we are up to date by uh, making sure that we uh, offer you. Uh, elective courses that are going to introduce you to new emerging areas and also uh, the latest uh, demands from industry. And you will get that uh, through elective courses that you can take as part of your degree. Uh, here's just some examples of some of the typical uh, core uh, computer science courses that you will take. Uh, now, these are not, you wouldn't have to take all of these courses, so it depends on the particular degree, whether it's a major, advanced major, honors, and the particular concentration, uh, whether it's the computing or the analytics com concentration. But this is a good uh, sample of some core courses. 
uh, computer organization, uh, discrete structures, analysis of algorithms, theory of computing, uh, computer networks, operating systems, software engineering. Um, can go to the next slide, please. Uh, here are some um, elective courses. And this is basically illustrating uh, the point that we make sure that we are up to date, that our degree is very up to date in terms of uh, emerging areas. Uh, and this is because of the nature of computer science. Uh, computer science is a rapidly evolving field that needs to adapt quickly and, and, and be up to date. So for example, here we have courses in biomedical computation, uh, interactive programming, mobile application development, uh, cybersecurity, health analytics, machine learning, big data. So these are areas that are really uh, hot right now, uh, areas that are very, um, uh, I guess, uh, important both in industry and in, in computer science uh, research. Uh, in terms of uh, research opportunities, uh, uh, there are many, many opportunities for undergraduate uh, involvement in uh, faculty uh, research projects. Uh, we have a very research intensive environment in the department. And one of the reasons for this is that, as I mentioned previously, we have a very uh, big or relatively big uh, graduate uh, student body. So if you, when you are involved in research uh, with faculty members, for example, during the summer, uh, you are also collaborating with graduate students. So it is a very uh, active uh, and um, a healthy uh, research environment. We have many uh, funding opportunities, uh, inter scholarships, awards. Uh, one of the particular uh, opportunities that we have in the department is the Stanley and Doreen Ali Hips Endowment in Computer Science. So this is uh, uh, an endowment that the department has. And we use this uh, endowment for computer science students uh, to do uh, most of the time to do research uh, during the summer with uh, faculty members. Uh, these are some of the uh, areas uh, of research of our faculty members in the department. So you can see that there is a lot of uh, variety here. So we have artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, computer vision, uh, robotics, uh, evolutionary computation, computer graphics, uh, computer networks, uh, parallel computing, big data, uh, and, and, and many others. So there's a lot of uh, many different areas. Now, I guess one of the things that you can notice from here is that there is uh, a focus uh, on artificial intelligence uh, related uh, research areas in the department. Uh, as a computer science student, uh, you also have the opportunity to complete a co-op. Uh, so you can complete a 12 to 16 months of work experience through CNFX co-op program. And usually second or third year computer science students have uh, the opportunity to complete the co-op. Uh, there is a huge uh, demand for computer science uh, majors in, uh, in the workplace. So uh, basically what, it, what happens uh, with the computer science co-op is that we have more uh, opportunities than students that are available for the co-op. So that is one of, I guess, um, that happens because of the huge uh, demand for computer science uh, graduates in, uh, in, in, the, in the workplace. So if you decide to do a co-op, uh, chances are that you will not have any problem in finding a placement in, if it's uh, computer science uh, related. Uh, <clears throat> we have many uh, student activities in the department. Uh, we have a very active uh, student society that organizes many social events. Uh, they organize many um, uh, tutorial events. Uh, uh, we also have, our students are also very active in, in, the, in uh, programming competitions. So um, we, we won the, the most recent uh, uh, ACM programming competition uh, this, uh, this year. So uh, programming competitions is something that our students uh, are really uh, excited about and, and many of them do participate uh, in this. 
we can go to the next slide, please. Uh, that is actually the, the last slide for uh, computer science. Oh, okay, sorry. I sorry you I have another a, one with... to wrap up with there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye. All right, so I will move on to the next slide and I will ask uh, the chair of our Earth Sciences Department, uh, Dr. Lisa Kelman, to share a little bit uh, about Earth Sciences at St. FX. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for, for joining us this evening. It's exciting to see this nice long list of uh, interested students. I'm not going to spend very much time rehashing some of the information that you've already um, that you've already gotten from from some of the other um, program um, chairs, but I just want to tell you a little bit about um, the Earth Sciences program and department because it's um, it's probably of the um, of of the science options BSc options at Saint FX. It's probably the one students coming into Saint FX know the least about and have the least exposure to. Um, prior to entering um, university. It's highly interdisciplinary. Um, it really uses um, chemical, physical, biological, mathematical methods um, to study uh, our planetary history, um, the materials you know, that we use to build, you know, we need to exploit to build our cell phones and things like that, and to understand um, our climate and, um, and our environment. It's science focused, so it's understanding the scientific aspects of any of those um, problems. The, um, the program options have been well described, but, but there are a number of, um, in terms of you know, uh, advanced major honors, um, major, and then there are options for um, minor uh, degree in this program, which is quite popular. Um, but really, you, you, students coming in tend to focus on um, more on the sort of traditional earth sciences, which would be more the geological sciences, where you're looking at things like paleontology and earth history, um, um, and uh, and and other students are more interested in kind of present day um, environmental and climate issues. So they're focused more on courses that allow them to understand how, you know, water, air, um, soils, um, you know, how, how material um, contaminants um, move through, um, energy moves through um, those systems. Um, so it really draws um, students who have um, a solid base in a lot of the other sciences. It really encourages that. Um, and there are a number of um, joint degree options. I would point you to the um, web page uh, to get more information and recommend that you get in touch with me directly if you have any um, specific um, questions about our program. But the, the, the courses, um, again, if you peruse the website, you can get some more idea of the types of courses um, and the sort of programs that you would um, follow, um, but a lot of them focus either on doing things in the field environment. You can see one example of that in the slide that's in front of you. Um, it's is a, in the Cape Breton Highlands doing a, one of our field schools, environmental field school. There's a field school, advanced field school that runs um, every couple of years in Spain. Um, so there's a lot of neat opportunities for students who are interested in the field, um, but also there are a lot of courses that run in more of a laboratory setting um, and also that do more computational work. Okay, so working with computers and, and larger data sets. So there's an awful lot of breadth. It's a small department. There's really great opportunities for hands-on research. It's very research intensive. All of our faculty have national and internationally funded um, research programs. So there are great opportunities. There are a lot of graduate students, master's, PhD, and uh, postdoctoral fellows around, and it's just a nice environment um, when you're getting in at the undergraduate level to have exposure to, you know, the kinds of pathways and opportunities that, um, that are available to you, and you see that um, very nicely in that kind of setting. So 
yeah, I'd encourage you to get in touch with me if you have any questions and to take a look at the website um, and, and to take a look at the program um, and the um, options that we offer in that program. Okay. Great, thank you, Dr. Kelman. That was very informative. Uh, I would now like to ask Dr. Frank Como, uh, Chair of Engineering, to share uh, some information about engineering. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm the Chair of Engineering, and our program in engineering is a relatively small program. Uh, we have a two-year diploma in engineering program, and uh, we're what we call an associated university, which means that we're associated with Dalhousie University. So most of our students uh, graduate with a diploma and then go to Dalhousie University and it's a, a seamless transition. Although students can go to other universities, um, but often uh, they do not often they go to Dalhousie. We have a two year diploma, but it can also be done in three years. So basically it means doing six courses a term for two years or four courses per term for three years. We also have a combination with a Bachelor of Science, as you might remember from the computer science talk. And uh, so the engineering diploma can be combined with um, Bachelor of Science in um, chemistry, physics, mathematics, computer science or sciences and biology. And in this case, students take four years to do the Bachelor of Science as normal, but they end up with a, a Bachelor of Science that is a bit more focused towards uh, applied science, towards engineering than usual. They can at that point continue on to Dalhousie and get an engineering degree or uh, simply go on to work with their Bachelor of Science and which has a bit more of a focus on uh, applied science. Our um, years in engineering, we have about uh, 50 to 60 students each year. So our classes are um, relatively small. And in second year or the end of the first year, students decide on which discipline they want to um, have. So they apply for the disciplines, which would be either chemical engineering, civil and electrical, environmental, industrial, um, mechanical, or mineral resources, which used to be called uh, mining engineering. So those are the options for um, going to Dalhousie. So I would say one of the uh, advantages of uh, our program here at St. FX is that you students uh, will have uh, good access to the professors. We have office hours, but we are often available outside of office hours. Also, one of the things we do is we have a design course in each year, in each of two years. And with that design course, student, uh, they have design projects and they work in groups, but also normally have access to uh, local engineers, which is been more of a challenge with uh, the pandemic, but normally it would have uh, local engineers um, consult with them on, on their design projects. I know that most engineering students don't know which discipline of engineering they want to take at the start. So this is gonna help them to see what each discipline is like. Uh, what does a mechanical engineer do? What does an electrical engineer do, for example? We also have engineers come in as guest speakers to help you with that um, decision. And also, I just want to mention um, that, see my time's up, but I just want to mention that often students also like the uh, environment here at St. FX, aside from the engineering program. So that's it for my quick introduction to engineering. Perfect, a great, uh, great introduction. Uh, so now I'd like to move things along to uh, introduce Dr. Charlene Weaving, uh, the chair of our human kinetics department. Thank you, John. Thanks everyone for joining tonight. John, can you advance the slide, please? So human kinetics are philosophies that movement is essential to life. So if you're interested in physical activity, sport, fitness, exercise, then we think human kinetics is the program for you. You can pursue either a BA or a BSc human kinetics. And you'll take courses that focus on human movement from a variety of perspectives. And we believe that our graduates become quite well-rounded upon graduation. And there's opportunities for experiential learning with hands-on labs and access to service learning opportunities. 
Next slide, please. So here's just a collage of pictures of potential career options or pathways with what you can do with the human kinetics degree. We've included the QR code. And if you follow that, you can go to our website where we list specific alumni and what types of um, pursuits that they are engaged in right now. Many of our grads pursue physiotherapy, occupational therapy, athletic therapy. They, they be, work in physical education, sport management, medicine, sport physical activity research, sport policy, sport for all. So there are many different opportunities available. Next slide, please. And what I've done here is just listed what the typical first year looks like for a human kinetics student. So you can see the variety of courses that you take and what courses are required outside of the human kinetics department. And I'll just mention that at the end of your second year, you will have to choose a pathway. And there are numerous pathways that you can select from. So for example, a kinesiology pathway, which is our most general option, a pre-education pathway, a sport management minor or and a health science minor, a human nutrition minor that can then lead to you pursuing a human nutrition degree in your fifth year. So you get two degrees in two in five years, a diploma in engineering and a minor in math. So those there's lots of options. And if one pathway isn't working for you, you're able to transfer out of transfer and to find one that works. So we're flexible that way. And we don't think that anybody should be stuck in something that they're not enjoying. And I'm happy to answer any of your questions in the Q&A more about human kinetics. So thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Dr. Weaving. And you know, if there are any questions about that, I do have firsthand experience uh, in the program as well. So at the end, you know, if you want to hear from a past student, uh, ask away any questions related to that. Uh, so I'd like to now bring up a familiar face from earlier on during the webinar. I'd like to welcome back Dr. Ann Fox, Chair of Human Nutrition. Great, it's me again. And uh, if we can go to the next slide, that would be great. What I'd like to say to folks is that everyone on this call is a nutritionist. We all eat uh, and we all have some sense of what foods work better for us, what foods agree with us and what don't. The human nutrition degree, um, Let's us take that a step further. And um, there are lots of career pathways. I think a lot of people don't realize that nutrition is a great um, science foundational degree that you can use for many other, as a stepping stone to many other health professions. So a lot of students come into our program thinking that they would like to become nutritionists or dietitians. And for sure, we have a great integrated um, dietetic internship program that students can apply to in their third year and start in the summer after third year. And um, it allows you to become a registered dietitian. And I will say that we have among the, the highest rate of acceptance into dietetic internship programs um, in the country. So we have a very high success rate into those, those programs. But it can also um, be a stepping stone to other health disciplines like pharmacy, um, occupational therapy, dentistry, medicine, um, because it's good foundational health science. We have a new program uh, in food health and entrepreneurship. So if you're more interested in the food side of things and think you might like to get into new product development or setting up your own food and health related business. We are partnering with our business department and that's new. A lot of our students uh, go on to teaching. There is an absolute shortage uh, in the Maritimes and in other parts of the country um, with family studies teachers in particular. So all of our students who have gone that pathway have found jobs in, um, in that area of teaching. A number of our grads go into research, whether it's in food, nutrition, health. Um, and a lot of our students are interested in sport nutrition. And as Dr. Weaving mentioned, um, 
you can do a fifth year and get two degrees. So you can either do a kinetics degree and do a fifth year and also get a nutrition degree, or you can do a nutrition degree and do a fifth year and get a kinetics degree. So we've worked it out so that, um, you know, there's overlap with a lot of the basic health courses. And um, how great is that to get two degrees that are very related and important to each other in five years? So if we can go on to the next slide. Um, so why nutrition at St. FX? Um, as I mentioned, it's a great foundational science degree to go on to many other things. We have an integrated dietetic internship program with really high success rates um, into internship programs. Our classes are very small. We have a lot of involvement with the community. We have a brand new farmer's market building in Anaganish that has a state-of-the-art commercial kitchen where um, local food producers are scaling up new food products um, for sale. And our students are very involved with that. Um, I mentioned the double degree. We have students involved in research if they're interested in that from year one. And we have great food. We love to eat and we eat well. And uh, I'll just draw your attention to the, um, the slide here. Uh, every year we have a nutrition challenge in Nutrition Month. This was last year with our Dean Dan Beliveau, um, our uh, academic VP Kevin Walmsley, and our member of parliament Sean Fraser. He's the one wearing the tie there. They each had a team and we had a nutrition trivia contest um, where uh, Team Wamsley and our farmer's market team and Team Fraser squared off against each other and uh, the students led the way on that and it really helped promote the importance of nutrition in our community and how all our um, sectors, our food sector, our farmers, our health professionals, and our politicians too are all connected in health. So I'd be happy to answer any questions folks have about, uh, about the nutrition program at St. FX. Um, we love it and we have great food. So I'll pass it off. Wonderful, thank you, Dr. Fox. And I'll just add to that, the recruitment team has had the opportunity to actually participate uh, in a lab with human nutrition. So I can back up that statement of great food. We had a, a great experience uh, in the human nutrition lab. Uh, so now I would like to call upon our director of our School of Nursing, Dr. Patty Hanson Ketchum. Okay, so hi everyone. Um, it's Patty here, Patty Hanson Ketchum, and, and uh, as mentioned, uh, I'm the director here in the School of Nursing. Um, so just a, a few things on, uh, on nursing itself and, and why we consider nursing or why you would consider nursing. Um, and each of us has our own reasons why we want to become a nurse and uh, the BSEN nursing degree here at St. Evax prepares students to become professional registered nurses um, and, and uh, the aim to make a difference among patients, families, communities, and populations. We also have our own um, here in the, in at St. Evax, um, a high quality simulation center that supports our student learning um, where students process case scenarios in small groups um, to gain hands-on experience and practice uh, to prepare, prepare them for actual real life scenarios. Um, so, uh, and we do also have an amazing community of, of community members and health sector partners that enable our students to gain, again, hands-on experience with actual patients and families and groups in communities across uh, the province and clinical settings across the province, as well as across Canada for preceptor experiences. So we have, we have experiences and, and clinical practicums uh, all in every province across Canada at different phases throughout the, the program. So um, along with that simulation center that I mentioned. So the next slide. So, so there is a lot, there are a lot of diverse application experiences for students in the nursing program. And uh, so clinical uh, applications certainly built into our program in various ways, including skill development and competency development in our various labs. 
Um, also case scenarios of patients in our high fidelity simulation center. Uh, the simulation center, essentially, if you were to walk into it, does look like a hospital environment. It has triage components. It has also a home care, so a little apartment where students are provided with scenarios as if they were, you know, providing VON care in the home. So there's those sorts of simulations as well. The high fidelity, meaning that it, it does simulate um, real life scenarios. So we have scenarios where uh, there's, there's a mother giving birth, there's a baby that's delivered, uh, a simulated baby that's delivered and students uh, work in groups to um, take care of those situations as well as uh, you know cardiac arrest or other kinds of scenarios that they do have to uh, process. Um, so they process it and then they debrief it in a very safe way where they're giving feedback to each other. You know, I could have done this differently or that differently and learning from that process. Other applications are, you know, advocacy and social justice initiatives as part of health promotion in the community. Uh, that's a, a critical part of nursing as well. And then, uh, as I mentioned before, practicums, uh, actual practicums with instructors, instructor-led groups in hospitals uh, and uh, addiction centers, long-term care, VON, and then also preceptor. As students get closer to the end of the program, where their competencies are a little stronger, they're able to go into preceptored practicums with, um, with preceptors, uh, other RNs, uh, like I said, across the country and in, in Nova Scotia. So there's, a, there's an array of application in the program. Um, next slide. So, uh, so just in, in terms of the, uh, the program itself, uh, nursing, uh, as you, you probably know, is, uh, is a knowledge-based program. It's uh, evidence-based. The disciplinary knowledge comes from nursing as well as biological and physical sciences and social sciences and humanities. So it's a, a nice mix of disciplines in terms of the knowledge base. Um, nursing is an essential health-affirming practice. Um, and really it's, it's about um, a, pr developing a body of knowledge and also competence and commitment and dedication and caring uh, for the profession, for patients, families, communities. Um, and it requires adherence to our code of ethics as a profession, our standards of nursing practice, our entry level competencies. So we're all, um, uh, that we're all required to meet these elements as part of the profession uh, in the provision of competent and evidence-based care, which is the, the aim of nursing, registered nursing practice. So as always, we see the role of nurses working in varying capacities, uh, including public health, provision of care in the front lines, nursing research to inform best practice, nursing education to build student capacity to enter the workforce, and student nurses investing in knowledge development and practice uh, to provide quality care to, to patients and families and communities and populations. Uh, in our program, we also have advanced major and honors options where students can do research or project initiatives around specialized areas of, of health. Um, so there's those options for, for eligible students as well. Um, next slide. So, so, um, so the, this is the, the final slide, but uh, again, um, as mentioned, and as you know, uh, the Reagan School of Nursing is, is nested uh, in a small world context. So it provides unique experiences, practice experiences in rural hospitals, as well as urban hospitals. Um, we welcome nursing students into the program at varying times each year. So we have a four-year program and an accelerated option for students who've already had university uh, prerequisites. Um, and uh, as other profs have said already, you know, we provide a lot of opportunities to really get to know our, fac our, our students and students get to know our faculty and instructors. Uh, the classes are relatively small uh, compared to other universities and we do a lot of group work, a lot of processing in smaller groups. Our clinical groups are with eight students in the hospitals. So uh, so there's a lot of in-person getting to know very, very closely um, each other. So, uh, so we aim to prepare students to be high functioning, as you can tell, safe, competent, ethical healthcare professionals. 
So, so that's just a, in a nutshell, a little summary and uh, best wishes as you make these difficult decisions on, on uh, but very important ones in terms of the, your academic and, and your career trajectory. So best wishes to all of you. Thank you very much for that introduction to the Rankin School of Nursing. So the last chair that I'd like to call upon is Dr. Peter Marslin to give an introduction to physics at St. FX. Yeah, good evening, everyone from Nova Scotia. Um, I actually, so next slide, please. Uh, I actually wanted to start to, to, to talk to you about why you should take physics. It might be better if I first tell you when you should not take it. If you don't like math, then it's really not for you. Uh, while we offer a few courses where uh, math doesn't play a big role, uh, if you really want to do a major or a joint major in physics, uh, you can't get around the math. And the reason is, is that what physics basically is, is uh, quantitative problem solving. We analyze quantitatively using math um, natural uh, phenomena, and then we do cross correlation. So we try to understand how one system uh, work similarly to another system. And that's really what makes physics very, very attractive for many employers as well. You learn quantitative analysis skills that can be applied in very different areas. And I'm kind of going to come back to that in a minute. Uh, but that's really what a physicist uh, learns in uh, his studies. Uh, why should you do that at CENEVEX? Well, we are a small department. Uh, we have a very close connection with our students. and. Um, we concentrate our research that we do with our students. So it's not with our undergraduate students. It's not like at a large university where most research is done with grad students and postdocs. Uh, we really do all of this with our undergraduates. Next slide, please. And um, that's one way for our students to get involved in the department. Uh, so this is just a, a, a screenshot taken from our webpage. It's a list of the papers that our students are co-authoring since in the last couple of years. So it's uh, quite a long list and uh, the students love it to get involved even after their first year. We uh, get them started quite early uh, if they want to. And um, it looks irresistible on your CV. If you apply to grad school and have a, a research paper there, uh, they really like that. Next slide, please. Yeah, doing research is not the only way to get involved in the department. You can also do, uh, uh, you can present your uh, a research project or uh, advanced major project uh, on, at conferences. And we send our students to kind of every place uh, in the country uh, from uh, East Coast to West Coast and back. Uh, you can help running our public observ uh, observation sessions at the observatory. We have a small observatory that's used for teaching, that's used for some research project as well, and that's used to give the public the, op uh, the opportunity to see some of the stars and learn a bit about it. And students run that really, so they're, they're really helping big time there. Uh, we also do fundraisers for the local hospital, and uh, that's, uh, that's part of our community outreach. So that's uh, a solar oven that students build uh, for this fundraiser uh, in the lower left there. And of course, we have a lot of social activities. So it's not only uh, human nutrition who, who do a lot of good food. You can also get that uh, at physics socials. Next slide, please. Yeah, let's come back to why you should take physics. As I mentioned, uh, you learn a lot of quantitative skills and uh, that's welcome in many other fields. So virtually all other sciences welcome physics, physicists for the skills that they bring in, but not only sciences. You can use the same, uh, uh, the same uh, skills in medicine, in economics, in IT, in education, virtually everywhere really. And, and that makes uh, you really attractive on the job market. And uh, because you learn so much uh, uh, using, um, uh, using calculus in particular for studying rather advanced systems, you've learned that really well. And that's what physicists are really known for. So for instance, uh, I regularly get um, flyers from economic schools across the country who are targeting physics students because they know that they know uh, that, they're, that they're so good in qu uh, quantitative analysis. Next slide, please. So the most important reason actually to take physics is it's really cool. Uh, so all these examples that I've 
put here on this slide, they're very personal. I personally started, I wanted to understand how the smallest building bricks of, of matter work like, so subatomic physics. And in order to study these smallest things, people have actually built the largest machine uh, uh, that humanity ever built. Uh, so that's the Large Hadron Collider. So I first got involved in this. Uh, then I learned that uh, the physics of the smallest things actually governs the physics of the very early universe, of the Big Bang. So I got interested in cosmology and relativity and studied black, so black holes as well. And I wanted to do my PhD in that direction. And my supervisor got interested in atoms, molecules, and light. So he pushed me in that direction. So I learned how to do a single molecule imaging, how to bend light around objects so that they appear invisible to somebody on the other side of the object. And then you can use that to build something else like a quantum computer. So that's what I did then. And so you, you can see how you do cross correlations, cross connections between different fields and not just in physics. And, and that also keeps you going. Um, in other, uh, so in, 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 if, you, if you just do all these courses or so, then uh, it, it can get boring at some point to learn all of these skills. But since there's always something new to learn, that's really why physics is so fascinating and why you learn this stuff really well, because there's always something new to discover. Yeah, and if you have any questions about the physics program, I'm happy to answer that uh, in the question and answer period. Thank you. Perfect, thank you very much for that introduction to physics. So that concludes our chairs and director portion of the webinar. We are now going to move into our student ambassadors. So we have three students who uh, have given up their time to share what it's like being a uh, student in the Faculty of Science at St. FX. So our first student is a biology student and I'm sorry if I don't pronounce your last name correctly, uh, Carmen Yusuferi. All right, hi everyone. So my name is Carmen. I am a fourth year student here at St. of X. I'm doing my Bachelor of Science in a joint honors uh, with biology and math. So if anyone has any questions on what my past four years have looked like and, and what courses I've taken to get that degree, then feel free to ask. Um, I'm just gonna talk uh, briefly about my specific experience with St. of X and, and in particular the biology department because I'm a little bit more involved with that. Uh, so after my second year, I got the opportunity to do some research um, that past summer. And then this recent summer, I also continued doing research with a supervisor in the biology department. Um, I was able to go into the lab and do research in person and actually conduct some experiments, which was really exciting and it was a great opportunity and I'm grateful for that. Um, I'm currently in the middle of writing my thesis um, on that work that I did this past summer. I also got the opportunity to work as a lab TA uh, last year as well as this year, which is great on a CV and is really valuable for things like masters and a PhD program if that's what you're interested in. You'll have that opportunity here at St. of X. Um, but overall, my experience with the science department has been really great. I think that the professors have really added to that and, and made it as, as great as, as it is. Um, they've been really supportive uh, and helpful and they've always welcomed students to their office hours. If you get the opportunity, go to office hours. Um, and also just, I know everyone's mentioning small class sizes, but it really is important specifically this year. Um, my classes in, in third and the fourth year classes are so small that they've all been in person this year. The labs have been running normally. Um, and also all of my professors know me by name, which is really great. They know my personality for, for when I need to ask for references. I've never struggled looking for references. So that's also really important and a big bonus. Um, yeah, and the biology department has a lot of great programs as well. They have free tutoring ses sessions. They have things like awards night and, and other different kinds of support. So it's really great here. You should definitely come. Um, if you have any questions uh, about specific experiences, let me know at the end and I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you very much, Carmen. That was some great insight. Uh, so now we're going to move on to our next student. Uh, my screen will move, there we go. Uh, so now I'd like to ask uh, Rachel Tooth to come forward and uh, share a little bit about her experience as a human kinetics student at Santa Fe. Hi, thank you so much for having me. 
Um, my name is Rachel Tooth, and I'm currently a fourth year here at St. FX, um, completing my human kinetics degree with a minor in health science. Um, I'm also uh, in the middle of doing my thesis, my honors thesis, with Dr. Charlene Weaving, who you previously saw. Um, I'm originally from the United States, from Maine, so all of you uh, U.S. citizens out there. <laughs> Um, I'm actually a dual citizen as well, um, and I'm currently the general manager for both the men's and women's soccer varsity teams here at St. FX, which has been an incredible opportunity just working with the staff here. Um, I find as a human kinetic student, you get really involved with the community. I have been a head coordinator with the Fundamental Special Olympics Committee here, uh, working with children with physical and or mental disabilities, helping them with motor control and just movement. I am currently the co-president of our uh, pre-med society here and a fourth year representative for our HKIN society. So I'm definitely involved in all the um, societies and everything the human kinetics offers. So I can give some insight about that. And I have also been um, a teacher's assistant with one of our human kinetics uh, classes this past semester, which is an amazing opportunity and also looks great on a CV, as Carmen mentioned. Um, I just wanted to say that St. FX is a great opportunity just to expand yourself. The teachers really want to foster your experience and help you along the way. Uh, Anaganish is one of my favorite areas right now. It's just an incredible opportunity to be a student here, and I am welcome to answer any questions you guys may have. Thank you very much, Rachel. That was great. Uh, so now our last uh, student ambassador is Kennedy Nangle, and she is a biology student at St. FX, and she is going to share a little bit about her experience. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Kennedy, and I'm from Ottawa, Ontario, and I'm in my fourth year studying biology as well. And I feel um, that everyone has talked a lot about the program, so I might speak a little bit more um, to the student experience. I actually transferred um, to St. of X from a university in Ontario that was uh, quite large and just not for me. Um, so I can really speak to the difference in community that St. of X provides um, with its small class sizes and getting to know your professors and stuff like that. But as well as the community and residents um, and the partnerships that go on with the town of Antigonish and stuff like that is really special. And I think very unique to St. of X. Um, and yeah, it's a great, great spot to live and students are very involved with the community, which is a huge plus. And again, if anyone has questions, um, feel free to ask. Thank you. Great, thank you. So that concludes our panel. So thank you very much to everyone who took the time this evening to come out and participate in this uh, event. There was lots of uh, great information shared. Uh, hopefully you're all feeling like you know uh, a lot more about the Faculty of Science at St. FX. Uh, so just before we move into the Q&A portion of the evening, uh, I have my contact info on the screen there. So if there are any questions, you know, um, we have you know a little bit of time left for questions, but if we don't get through them all or if another question pops up, you know, down the road, you can feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to answer any questions, but you can also visit uh, the link I have there, the San FX Talk to Us page. This is where you'll find information for all the various student success leaders who work across Canada and the United States. So if you want to connect with a student success leader who is specific to your region, you can find uh, their contact info on, uh, on that uh, Talk to Us page. And so, one last thing before moving into the, uh, the question period, I'm just going to do the prize now for the sweater, uh, just in case you know you don't have to stick around for uh, the Q&A period if you don't want to. So just wanna make sure that in case this person decides to leave, they're aware that they won. So um, the winner is just checking, uh, my colleague Lucas is working here in the background. So he has just sent me a message. Uh, the winner is going to be Jaden Shaw from Wicogama, Nova Scotia. So congratulations, Jaden. Thanks for coming out this evening. If you want to send uh, an email to the address, uh, my email address there on the screen, uh, we can get that sorted out and get that prize sent your way. 
So without further ado, we'll move into the question and uh, answer period. And I'll just leave my contact info on the screen there for the first few questions, just in case you want to take a picture or jot that down. Uh, so the first question um, I'm going to direct to Dr. Fox. Uh, just wondering a little bit uh, if you could just give a bit more of an explanation uh, about the health program at St. FX. The health program. So I assume that um, what the person's referring to is the Bachelor of Arts and Science in Health. Um, so it's quite a unique program and it's meant to give students a range of opportunities to pursue um, within health disciplines. So you may be thinking you wanna be a health professional, but you're not exactly sure which one, or you may not necessarily have a particular profession in mind, but you have a general interest in health. And it might come from either the science side of things, like you might be interested in how the body works, physiology, anatomy, or um, the, at the body at the cellular level, or you might be more interested in the things in society that impact health. Like, um, you know, is, are our communities safe? Do we have opportunities for physical exercise? Do people have access to healthy food? Um, things that are more related to policy or the social science. And so the health program has a common year, first year, and you can decide from there. Um, there's actually a ton of courses that you can select from um, across the university campus um, and put together really a very unique undergraduate experience related to either the social side of health or the more um, life science side of health. And, you know, it does lead to a variety of different career paths and research opportunities, depending on which aspect um, of health you want to get, get into. So, you know, it's a really nice uh, degree if you know you're interested in health, but you're not exactly sure what aspect. Um, or, you know, if you do have a very particular goal in mind, you can carve that path out through that program as well. I'm not sure if that answered the question, so feel free to, um, uh, you know, to add more to the question or, or ask me for more specifics. Great, thank you. And I'd just like to add to that, that um, we are holding our uh, Faculty of Arts uh, session at 7 p.m. tomorrow night, and uh, both our health and climate environment programs will be covered during that session. Uh, so if you are interested and available, you can uh, sign up for that session the same way as you would have signed up for tonight's, and some more information will be covered uh, on health there. Uh, so the next question is uh, related to chemistry and biology. Um, and just wondering, you know, what uh, proportion of classes are uh, held online versus in person this year, uh, specifically within chemistry and biology? So uh, maybe if Dr. Aquino or Dr. Galway, if uh, either of you would like to answer that question. Yeah, I can, I can certainly uh, answer the chemistry portion of that. Um, in the first term, in the fall, the fall session, we had uh, only two of our courses were uh, online, and that was our... Um, uh, first year nursing uh, uh, course, which uh, had a large enrollment, and our um, first half of our uh, organic, second year organic. Uh, in second term, it was only the, uh, the biochemistry, uh, the Chem 255 um, course, the second year biochemistry course that was uh, online. Um, however, all of those courses, all three of those courses had uh, in-person lab components. So all the labs were in-person. It was just the actual course that was was online. Uh, so I guess, other than that, all of our other courses were taught in person. Um, labs were diluted a bit, of course, and spread over a larger, uh, um, we did fewer labs in, uh, uh, in the same amount of time to, to preserve social distancing. But uh, over 90% of our, certainly all of the chemistry courses were in person. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, Sorry. So, oh, sure. oh, yeah, we had the same thing in biology. So I, um, we did our best to um, provide in-person lab experiences, but um, there simply wasn't enough um, 
a space in classrooms for social distancing. So thank you. Great, thank you for those answers. Uh, now I have a nursing question for Dr. Hansen Ketchum. Uh, a student is wondering if they don't initially get accepted into the nursing program out of high school and they enroll in a, another health related field. They're just wondering, you know, uh, is it possible and you know, what the process would look like if they were to uh, transfer into nursing uh, after uh, studying for a while in another health uh, related field? Uh, that, that's a great question, and we do accept transfer students. Um, it's Patty here. I don't, I don't know if you can see me or not, but um, yeah, so, so that definitely is a, an option. Um, just keep in mind, though, and it's in the academic calendar, and you can reach out to us for further questions, but there are eligibility criteria. So there are a number of courses um, that are required in order for you to transfer into nursing. Um, so, so keep that in, in mind as well, but certainly that's an option. Um, for sure. Great, thank you very much. Um, so I have an engineering related question here. Um, a student is wondering if uh, they get to pick uh, their professors and courses or if that's something that is predetermined uh, in that program. Uh, hello, yeah, in the engineering program, since we have mainly uh, single section uh, classes, there, there would only be one professor for each course. So I'm not sure the nature of that question. Maybe that's uh, what you're getting at, I'm not sure. Okay, and there's actually uh, another engineering uh, question, so we'll, we'll stay on that stream. Uh, just wondering if uh, you can do an engineering degree with a minor in computer science. Uh, yeah, I'm just typing away, uh, trying to answer that. Oh, great. Um, so <laughs> in, in engineering uh, diploma, you have two years uh, at St. FX to get the diploma. In electrical engineering years three and four at Dalhousie, they have a, a computer option, which is a, not the same as computer science, but it's the closest thing to, I would say, to what uh, engineering with a minor in computer science is. Alternately, you could combine the engineering diploma at St. FX with computer science at St. FX. Um, so those would be your options. Great. Uh, so we have another biology and chemistry question here. Uh, wondering what the typical uh, first year class size is. So maybe if Dr. Aquino, you'd like to address chemistry first, um, and then Dr. Galway, if you could address biology. Yeah, so uh, we have three uh, first year chem courses and in a typical year, this is, a, uh, this would be an atypical year because of COVID, but in a typical year, our, our, um, our nursing, uh, first year chemistry course 151 would uh, normally be 110 to 130 students. Um, the first year uh, general chemistry, which is the one for mostly service, but also for, for BSCs in general, uh, we have three sections of those. And in a normal year, you're looking at about 80 to 90, perhaps as much as 100, but uh, between 80 and 100 for those, depending on the section and how the scheduling falls. And finally, the, uh, the uh, other um, first year chem course would be the 120s, which would incorporate the engineers and those who are uh, definitely sure they wanna go on to do a chemistry degree or a physics degree, uh, that would normally be 60 to 80 students. So those are the three first year chem courses. And uh, for biology, well, if I look at the first year courses, we can, uh, divide them into uh, co courses, first year courses that we offer to uh, nursing students. And the cap there is dictated by the how many students enter the nursing program. So that's usually around 120. And then the other uh, uh, half of the, our course, first year courses, by uh, first year biology. Um, those two three credit courses serve a large number of students. So in the fall term, we had three sections. 
The smallest section was 70 students and those were students in the health program. The other two sections were larger. Altogether, the, those three sections, um, just over 300 students, around 314 something, or it might've been higher than that, possibly 340. Um, this, this term, we only have two sections. So there's one section that is um, 140 students. And I think the other section is around 70, 80, something like that. But um, so we have two big sections anyway. So uh, yeah, first year classes are large, but the uh, size rapidly diminishes as you move into second and then into third year. So thank you for that question. Great, thank you. And I think that's, you know, the general, you know, atmosphere at St. FX is the small class sizes, which really allows uh, a, a great environment for students to get to know their professor, professors well and their peers, which really helps uh, them grow in that environment. And so just looking at the time here, we have about time for one last question. I think it's kind of a perfect uh, segue for this question. And I, I can take this one is, you know, a student wondering, the transition from high school to university, um, you know, definitely, you know, uh, that is a transition and wondering how that, uh, you know, how that works at St. FX and will you, will they be supported? So yes, it, uh, yes, you definitely will be supported. So hopefully uh, after hearing uh, all the various perspective this, perspectives this evening, um, you will begin to understand that at St. FX, we want our students to, uh, to be supported and feel comfortable coming forward and asking questions. Um, the majority of my professors, you know, at St. FX while I was a student actually knew me by my first name. Uh, so that's, you know, one thing that we are known for. There are lots of student supports uh, available. We have academic advisors. We have our accessible learning center. We have student supports in place to ensure that students, you know, um, when they transition from high school to university, that they feel that they are, are in an environment where they're able to grow um, and, you know, further their education. Um, so that will wrap everything up for the Q&A portion of this evening. Uh, if any other questions do pop up, please feel free to reach out uh, to me, uh, like I said, with that email or visit the St. FX Talk to Us page. There are a variety of ways you can get in touch with other student success leaders uh, specific to your region. And just as a reminder, we have a few more events coming up for our February information month. Uh, so tomorrow is our Faculty of Arts session. And uh, next week, we'll be having our residence and food services uh, session, as well as a panel for student services. Uh, so it'd be a great, you know, these are great uh, uh, webinars to check out. There's still time to, to register. And if you've missed any of our previous ones that we've held over the past couple of weeks, those will be, uh, have been recorded and will be uploaded to sanifex.ca slash info. So the website where you would have signed up for this event this evening, the recordings can be found there. Uh, so thank you everybody for coming out tonight. Thank you for all the panelists for taking time of, out of your evening. It was a very uh, informative session and I hope you are all feeling uh, like you uh, have uh, a greater depth of knowledge about the Faculty of Science at Sanifex. And we hope to see you here in, uh, in the fall. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John.